Okay, folks, today we're going to take a look at Drum Sequencer, explaining a little bit what it does and how it can spice up your sound. Okay, um, first of all, I've prepared a sound here with recent drum kits using Drum Sequencer for sequencing and a little bit of New York style compression and stereo with just to make it a little bit fancier. This is just an example drum. I know it's wonky, but uh, just listen to it. Let's build something our own and reset that patch and build something our own. So we just need to find out which node of the keyboard is which sound so we could work with that. First should be the kick, this is C1, this should be okay. In second place I like my hi-hat, nothing works here, why is that? Okay, there's my closed hi-hat, I need a snare, that's okay for now, clap is also okay, the hard snare, a big tom, okay this should be okay for now, so let's start with our kick pattern, just to keep it simple, 4 to the floor. We should okay so maybe let's keep this just a little bit simpler So by reducing this step length to 15, the pattern will be slightly shifted to all the others by time. And to keep this a little bit more controlled, we could set our reset step to 32 or either 64 or something, or 128, we even could incorporate a complete shuffle there, but we don't want that. We want to keep this simple. So we could do it like this, and this would mean that these two step one to the left side because this one step here isn't there. We could even go like 12 or 13 to, or maybe to something Maybe we could slide this a little bit to the side to make it more laid back. And maybe reduce the step size to... Let's make it 10. Maybe incorporate the snare here and slide it just slightly to the right. Now we change the speed of the third lane to half and that means in the time where the normal sequencer runs two circles, 
this will only run one thir one circle and this last bit has the same value as the two last bits of a normal one. And now we got an accent snare and we even could take down the probability so in 80% of the times this plays but in 20% of the time of this loop this wouldn't be played. We could even take it down to 75 so every fourth time it should be unhearable. So I've took down the claps a little bit because they were too dominant. What we could do now is just add a little bit more to our kick. Some little accents we change the repeats to three halves or... Oh no. Where's the note? Is there something broken? I don't know. Um, so we could change this to three halves, take it a little bit down in volume or velocity and make the probability maybe 50%. So this only plays every two rounds. Let's make the same here with a full step and take this down to 25%. And now our loop sounds like this. So there's this little bit of movement here. Um, what to do next? So one is our full loop. So let's copy all of that. So we copy the full loop and insert it at the eighth pattern. And we delete our first one. So, so we clear everything in here. The step lengths as well as the speed stays the same, also the slide option will stay the same. So we got the same stuff applied to our first one as our last one. Um, maybe we should raise the shuffle a bit to 58 or something that's suitable for our track and do the same for all the other patterns. So we should just copy the first that already shows our sequence changes and copy that over to all the other patterns. So we have always the same rhythm starting point. And now we could start to construct our drums. If we were lazy we would just copy over the 8 to the 1 again and just starting by muting all the stuff. So we just do that here, we copy number eight, paste it into number one and we would just mute everything that's unnecessary except for the kick. And now we have our basic kick pattern here. And could decide if we want to change something or if we need to incorporate something other in this. So this sounds fine to me, so we could delete oh. so we could delete row four and we could delete uh, row seven. So let's unmute this. So we got our first pattern ready. Now we just copy it over to the next pattern that's free and maybe incorporate something more here. Let's reintroduce the clap but in, a, but in an open way. So instead of giving five MIDI instructions <laughs> I only give three in the same time. And let's hear what this sounds like.
and we copy this over to the third and maybe D select our snare. So that sounds cool, we copy our third patch over to the fourth pattern and expand on this. Maybe we take out these two as well as this one and reincorporate our snare drum in some way. Maybe we could do something like that. So I guess four patterns is enough explaining. Just automate our patterns. And now we got the option to choose how long and which of the patterns should be played. So let's start with three. Go into four. Back to two. to one and maybe to eight. And that's how easy it is to do drums with drum sequencer. You just get one pattern that sounds cool to you and re-split it as you need it onto every other layer here. And you could just automate this and Play around in your song as you need it. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and could take away into your production. If you aren't already, please consider subscribing. This helps the channel grow. If you have any questions about Reason, feel free to ask. I hope I can answer them and I would be happy to help you out. Okay, that's everything for today. See you next time. Have a great day. Bye.